Hello, welcome to the Exchange Installation and Configuration Series. Uh, what we're going to do here today is to uh, take on the next steps where we actually left. First thing first, <coughs> uh, what you need to do is uh, how to activate your Exchange server. Well, over here you can do it uh, in two ways, server, config, server configuration. Uh, all you have to do is uh, enter the product key over here. A new menu is going to pop up where you can uh, enter the product key. Uh, I'm running uh, an evaluation version of the Exchange 2010 SP1. So I'm not going to put anything here right now. <clears throat> but uh, in a production environment, you should also activate these things. Uh, well, it's a mandatory uh, option. You have to activate your Exchange server. You can do it manually also uh, over here in this link from, <clears throat> uh, from the Exchange um, management shell. So there you have it. Okay, let's go. Let's go back to organization configurations, mailbox, <clears throat> our database. This is where actually all the mailboxes are uh, stored in 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 this database. As you can see, the name of the database. It's mounted server name on mounted on the server. So let's see some properties. There it is. <coughs> the maintenance. There nothing actually here, except for this hosting. Uh, this mob server is actually hosting this uh, this database. Uh, its status is mounted. Okay. There are some options like background database maintenance. Uh, this should be checked. Uh, don't mount this database if you have uh, other other databases to uh, mount uh, mount at start of Windows startup. Enable circular login, and these database can be overridden by a restore. This should be checked. <coughs> Your database limits. Uh, send and um, send and receive limits, prohibit limits, all these are in megabytes, but in earlier 2010 versions it was in kilobytes, so mind these numbers. Um, this is a good thing to check, don't permanently delete items until the database has been backed up. Client setting, default public folder database, uh, since we are not actually using a public folder database, we are not going to uh, assign one. Offline address book. <coughs> There's our default at offline address book. Assign it to the database. If you have another offline address book, you can uh, create it on over here. Okay, apply. Maintenance also should be uh, all the maintenance checks, circular logging parameters change will not be applied until is re the database is remounted. Okay, this is one quick thing. You need to uh, journal all these things because there will be auditing issues and everything. So uh, make sure that you have these things prior to the audit auditing. Okay. <coughs> Uh, you can also create new mailbox databases. I'm going to work uh, with the default database that came with it. Uh, that's primarily installed for this one. There are some other things. Pop and IMAP. Um, IMAP 4. Here you can see it's saying uh, service is ready. It's manual, but you need to uh, make the service automatic. You, as you can see, there's an information saying that uh, service needs to be restarted. Okay, let's do this over here. You see, it's by default, it's manual. You have to select it as automatically. Well, 
when the window starts, this, th these services should be started automatically. It shouldn't be in a delayed state. There you go. Apply. Okay. There's another one. Pop three. Make it automatic. Start. There you go. You're done with the. This is actually I started with these things from a Windows Server Manager the services, IMAP and Pop three. Make sure that uh, you have this in automatic state. Okay, the last thing it would be creating a new mailbox. Uh, new mailbox. This is where you actually create the users. Uh, if you have existing users from your domain controller, you can import those users from uh, your domain controller. Um, and also, you can create uh, individual users from within this console. Uh, it's actually up to you. I'm going to do uh, an existing users. This is me. And I'm going to create another user for the my account. Okay let's do create a new user specify the mailbox database if you have different databases so I suppose like you could have uh, finance databases uh, IT databases and also uh, admin databases in different different location or something like that it's a good choice that you look you also you should uh, put your all, all your databases in where you can um, you have redundant drives. So okay, mm, active. Thing. I don't have these things. I didn't actually set up those things. So we're going to hit next. There you go. Click new. Share volume in Chaudhary. This mailbox will be set up momentarily. It's done. Finish. Okay. You can see that users over here in the mailboxes also have uh, similar account controls and everything from the sites and services aliases is shahab okay user information blah 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 it's already there uh, organizations account see that all these things are the same thing okay now there is one thing you can configure uh, each and every mailbox uh, mailbox properties and features for every client I mean every user you have you can enable Outlook web app so uh, disable it or so that this user cannot be able to access it uh, from the web mobile extension uh, <coughs> exchange active sync uh, you could enable it disable it mappy pop3 enabled so everything is enabled archive is disabled for this account okay so these are some account properties let's check with this account exchange management console okay <coughs> we're coming over here into app outlook web app as you can uh, oh, let me show you i'm logging in administrator in this machine there are some other things <coughs> I would also like you to see uh, like the exchange control panel https colon slash slash uh, mobs-pd.org slash ECP exchange control panel accept the certificate there you go first email transport test this is how this is just a test mail uh, I just sent it to me and <clears throat> it came back. Let's forward it to. Okay, let's see if it's here. 
certificate services yeah the machine is a bit slow uh, because I'm running uh, only uh, I only have two gigabytes of RAM there's not much actually two gigabytes two gigabytes a uh, two gigabyte of RAM, gigabyte of RAM isn't actually. Mm, it's not going to be enough. Not even close. Okay, it's taking too much time. Okay, as you as you can see, the calendars, contacts, uh, tasks, your inbox. This is just simply beautiful. Okay, uh, let's go back to the ECP, the Exchange Control Panel. You see all the user listing are already coming in. Web app, up Outlook web app. Let's go back to the mails and let's set up Outlook Express. Oh, sorry. Outlook 2010 over here. As you would see, 2000 setup. Yes, I'm going to, uh, I, I want to uh, set up my email accounts from Microsoft Exchange. Click next. Oops, you see? As I have as I've already, as I am already logged in as an administrator, in this uh, server or wherever you are actually setting up uh, when you're actually logging in using the domain controller your authentication just passed on to the uh, exchange server so it's already configuring automatically you see the proceed to the server yes server settings would be momentarily updated meanwhile Let's see those things over here in the ECP. I'm logged in as an administrator. Voila. Let's finish. Let's see if the things we want to see imports into the Outlook 2010. Hmm. It'll take some time. Meanwhile, we can go back to our exchange control, uh, the management console. That is administrator mobs pdorg has just came up. There's nothing new. Oops. Okay. Already came in. Another quick thing I want to share with you guys is that when you're actually creating a new mailbox, you have options for creating uh, different types of mailboxes. Let's show you the things. Recommended settings. for the Microsoft Office. Okay, let's go back to Exchange Management Console. Take some time to refresh the set, the tab. <coughs> oh, 
room mailbox for room scheduling. Uh, suppose like you have uh, a conference room or something like that. Multiple conference room could be set up for this one. Equipment mailbox. Uh, we use it for like mm, sharing the projector and other things. The sound systems. There could be a PA systems or something like that. Link mailbox is the name for the mailbox that is accessed by a security principal or user in a separate trusted forest. Not within this forest it's the same process you could go uh, go on with these things let's go back to our mailbox database folder database availability groups these are called tags <coughs> uh, there's so many things uh, to show you guys but time is running out Okay, so there we are right now. Outlook setup is completed. Shown you the ECP. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Web app is uh, functioning properly. Okay, then. Hope these videos are actually of some help to you. Take care. Bye.